All right, so we are back with Ansel again. And he is falling apart. And we have fast forward a number of weeks. Now the storms ended three weeks earlier and they, uh, you know, I'm not sure anymore how much longer they went on after that scene, but I'm going to say it was a week. So this is about a month later. Storms ended, but Ansel hasn't gone anywhere yet. disappears <laughs> all right so ansel has been hiding in this cave ever since the storm ended his wife is dead he doesn't feel like he has anything to live for and the kind of aggressive attitude that he had earlier talking about anybody who died in the storm deserved uh deserved it of course except for his wife he feels differently about her Funny how when we have a personal connection to somebody or our opinions of them will change or our opinions of a situation will change. But he more or less just wants to sit up here and die on his own. But somebody is coming and his name is Yanis Holden. Now Yanis, oh my god, that is definitely not Yanis. <laughs> the character, you can't really even see him that well on, this, on the screen. That is definitely not supposed to be his sprite. Okay, so... <laughs> let's let's go through this scene, and, and I'll discuss a little bit more about their background together. Fuck, that is not his character portrait either. Oh, he looks wrong. And he doesn't have the, uh, the illustration filter over him either. I really should have had the character portraits appear on both sides of the screen to make it like they're talking to each other instead of just appearing in the same spot. Norberg is in nearby town. Oh my god, that is a distasteful thing to say. I should have edited that out. <laughs> that need you? <laughs> god, my grammar is so bad here. There's no music playing. There should be music playing.
I'm just the space between the words. Fuck, his character portrait's still there. <laughs> oh my god, why? That's <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> okay, so we... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so we have... And look, look at his... Look at his uh, sprite is just so different. You know, I may never have created a character sprite for Yanis, but... This is, this is, the placeholder graphic is so bad. <sighs> Go figure. <laughs> Creative name there, buddy. <laughs> okay, so we're in the same area outside of his cave, but the waters have receded a bit. Oh, I can walk through a rock. Awesome. <laughs> so we can adventure around a little bit more. So just a little bit of detail about what the relationship of these two characters are. Now, it will be it will be expressed in the game a little bit later on, but it won't be within this episode, so I feel like I need to put a little bit of context into this. These two guys worked for a kind of shadowy organization of... Uh, not... I mean, they do employ assassins, but that's not their primary job. They sort of hold sway and influence over a lot of the nobility and the royalty of the world. So they try to, in a sense, influence the world in a lot of different ways. Not necessarily the best people in the world, and they use a lot of underhanded tactics to do it. And uh, that involves people like Ansel here who was employed in their service as an assassin. And one that had kind of a high profile, too. As you play through the game, you'll discover that a lot of people that you run across have heard of him. Because he was used as kind of a... his... cold efficiency and sometimes even brutality in achieving his goals had gained him some measure of fame. And it was... A lot of people you encounter will simply be afraid of him. Now, Yanis was the one responsible for recruiting Ansel into the organization, and has sort of acted as kind of a mentor to him. Look, Yanis has a shadow, but Ansel doesn't. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, Ansel kind of blames Yanis for what he perceives as leading him down a dark path, becoming this bad person that he has been and since losing his wife and seeing how the world was destroyed Ansel has kind of um, become sort of regretful over everything that he has taken part in the people he's killed the bad things that he has done so he's sort of having all of these feelings and regret and remorse and doubt and all this creep into his head and he just wants to crawl into the hole he was in and die. But Yanis has plans for him, and that's what we're doing here. Now, here is a monster at the bottom of the screen. Um, there are no random encounters in this game. I ha just have these creatures wandering around on the screen. 
Now, it should actually be chasing them down. I don't quite understand why it isn't. I can see it's trying to, so maybe I just have it where it won't... Uh, it won't cross a certain line or something. I can't remember why. Okay, fine. We'll fight the fucking creature. Okay, it's another swamp beast. So we're just going to kill this thing. So here is something that will have... Uh, well, I'll let Yanis describe it. So, what they picked up was, um, it, it's characterized as a weapon. When you kill creatures, this is how you pick up new equipment. You tend not to pick up a lot of equipment from shops in this game. In fact, I, and I'm not even sure I ever even implemented any shops in this game. But all of the stuff you accumulate will come as the result of killing these monsters. And it's sort of not really like armor or weapons that you pick up, but it's souls of departed creatures and people and things, which you use to enchant your weapons. You char enchant your armor, all of that kind of stuff. So a minor soul of strength increases your attack power by one. Now, we'll get a few of these ga in the game. I was kind of, like, really impressed with myself over the little uh, animation that occurs. Like, the crystal will appear, and then you touch it, and then you gain the item, and you get this animation of it disappearing. Unfortunately, it's not a <laughs> particularly easy thing to implement. I never figured out a way in this game engine of kind of automating that concept, creating a subroutine or a function to take care of it. And I more or less has had to copy and paste the entire... Um, process into each enemy so not every enemy will do it of course not at every enemy should but you know god this environment is so bland looking there's another enemy let's kill this thing and then get our see if it has a soul Now, I had originally intended... Okay, it didn't have anything. I had it... I don't, don't think I ever implemented it. But I did intend to not have your characters have traditional levels. The way that... Um, the way that RPGs tend to have. What I wanted to do was a, sort of a little bit more of a Dark Souls kind of thing. Where you gain stats... You gain a level, but... What that really means is you gain stats that you could apply to your character in whichever way you see fit. Oh, I just ran out of energy, so this is going to turn into a slog. <laughs> so, you... And the... Uh, so, like, you could increase your strength or increase your magic or increase your whatever. But some... So, you're not really gaining experience points from these fights... But what is happening is... Okay, uh, let, let me start over, because I'm not doing a very good job at describing it. These souls that you pick up off of defeated enemies, most of them are not really going to be useful as enchantments to your equipment or enchantments to your character, your armor, or whatever. What a lot of them are only really useful for doing is consuming them. 
And the more powerful the soul, the more you get out of them. So the soul of strength, it, I don't think I implemented it into the game. So let me see if I actually implemented it into the game. Uh, item. Souls. No, I did not implement it in yet. So you have a minor... A, let's say you have a, a soul of strength that has... That increases your strength or your attack power by 10. You can only equip one of these at a time. And once all of your characters have one, it's gaining more of them won't really help you at all. But what I had intended to implement in this game was a method of consuming the souls that you no longer need for equipment which will increase your stats by 50% of what the it would give you as applying it as an enchantment so let's say this minor soul of strength increased your attack power by 2 but you found another soul of strength which increased your attack power by 3 well of course you'd swap it out and put the more powerful one as your enchantment and you get to keep the old one, that's fine. You get to keep it, why not? But it's not doing you any good in your inventory, and if none of the other characters need it, you might as well consume it on your character, and it will increase your attack power by 50% of what it would increase your stats as an enchantment. And that was how I intended to have your characters level up. Now, I figured this would be a nightmare to try to balance the game out, so maybe that's why I never actually implemented it. But it seemed like a good idea to me. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a nightmare to try to balance, because, I mean, players might have a bad build and end up, like, just destroying their ability to actually beat the game. <laughs> None of these Swamp Beasts are even attacking. Let me just rest a few times. <laughs> huh. See, this is what how this whole thing I figured wasn't balanced out. Even on these simple fights, I am getting bogged down with having to rest my characters. What I should have done was implement a system where, like, as your character walks, they recover energy. Like, every step in every step gives you, like, 1% of an energy point or something, I don't know. And that would allow you to at least regain a little bit of energy between encounters, so you're not constantly just... just, um healing or resting. The fact that I can un outrun all of the monsters, though, is also a... I was going to eventually remove the ability to run, but I kept it in place in the game because I wanted to get through the environments quicker while playtesting. <laughs> like what I'm doing now. God, that environment is so simplistic. Alright, so we jumped forward a little bit, so they left the mountain path and they arrived in the outskirts of the town of Norberg, which is where Yanis had been uh, prior to arriving up at the mountains. I'm just going to let this scene play out. I'm not going to say anything here.
So we have a fight with a starving wolf. Oh, we regained our energy when we entered this environment. <laughs> That's a plus, at least. This fight should be easy. Oh, it can actually attack us. Not doing much damage, though. Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit about the scene we just saw. Because Yanis went to find um, find Ansel because he thought that he would be able to use his situation to motivate Ansel into doing something to help the people in the village. But it is not lost on me that that would mean... Yanis knew that these men were going to get themselves killed trying to fight the wolves. And he did nothing to stop it. In fact, he took advantage of the situation to manipulate Ansel into doing his bidding. That is absolutely intentional. It's perhaps you can think of... Uh, he may be doing something for what he believes is the greater good, but... Yanis is absolutely capable of sacrificing people or manipulating people for his own gains, his own benefits. So we switch perspectives again to Ambrose and Kismet. I'm going to let the start of this play out. The cold bitch there. Centrum is the, the uh, kingdom that they're in. Alright, so... Got some control of these characters. It's been a few weeks since the... Um, intro of these characters during the storm and they have traveled a good way now um, Ambrose has gone here because this is where his family was he was trying to make it here before the storms his mother and father and his sister are staying in this area they are uh, I don't know if nobility is the right word to call them but they are an affluent family and he had spent time in a university some distance away, and he was traveling home 
to see his family when all of this started happening. Fine, I'll kill you. Oh, shit, they have no energy. <laughs> I did not recover. They did not recover between scenes. This is like weeks later. Why not? <sighs> See, it's... I didn't balance it properly. The rest command should probably have recovered more of their energy. Maybe I should have had it that the rest command would recover 25% of their total energy as opposed to like 10%. So I would spend a lot less time doing this. Or maybe had some items which would recover their energy between fights that I could use. I don't know. There was a lot of solutions that I just didn't implement. Kismet has decided to travel with him, because really she's got nowhere else to go. God, he's too... his sprite is too small. Ah, that's another one. The sprite's too small. Fight! Oh my god, his sprite, his character portrait's still on the screen! <laughs> Alright, so his name is Jaeger. He is. Well, we'll find out more about him in a little bit. I had actually forgotten that you fight him here. I mean, I remembered that you encounter him, but I don't remember the fight. You're going to spend more time resting than you are fighting. This is terrible. All these characters seem like they're terribly out of shape. <laughs> he isn't even attacking. It's ridiculous. Did I not script an ability for him to attack? <laughs> Don't worry too much about it. It's not going to hold this playthrough of the game up too much because um, at some point all the battles just sort of fade out of the game because I stopped putting enemies into it. <laughs> Except for boss battles, of course. I, I think I implemented the boss battles. Damn it, stop missing. This is taking forever. Look at their shadows aren't even under them. <laughs> hey, this character portrait appeared in front of his character portrait. <laughs> and he ran off. Bye. Damn it. Hey, look, uh, Ambrose is tiny again. <laughs> oh, God, our character portrait's still there. What the hell? Did, how did I not know that this was going to happen? Bugs. So many damn bugs. Alright, so, um, Ambrose has gone ahead. He's worried about his family because this guy... God, I don't want to fight this thing. <laughs> this guy has shown up a bandit of some sort. And he is, uh, worried about his family. Now, Kismet is... 
confused. Some of the names that have been thrown around, Jaeger, uh, Ambrose, they're familiar to her, but she doesn't... She's not able to quite place what's going on. She's heard these names before, and we're going to hear a little bit about this in a bit. All right, so we got a fight with a dragon. <laughs> Comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Takes no damage. Can't actually hurt it. That's not just a balance issue. That was intentional. It's supposed to be too strong for you to fight. Another scripted fight. So, it'll be revealed in a little bit, although I'm going to have to end the episode at the end of the scene. Exactly why it is that she's confused about what's going on around her. Should be a certain number of turns that pass before this fight ends, so I'll just rest. That's what should be happening. <laughs> the fight just keeps going. All right, so hit it. I hope this isn't a bug and the fight just never ends. Okay, this feels like this fight's going on for too long. Like, what the hell's happening? can only rest and attack. She's not capable of anything else. Fight! End! <laughs> Alright, if this goes on for another few seconds, another few turns, I'm going to uh, 
do what I figured I was going to have to do it a few times during this game and go and jump into the editor, the game engine, and try to correct whatever the hell has gone wrong just so I can finish it. Okay, so I jumped into the engine and I checked it out and I figured out what was going wrong. The fact was that this battle was actually scripted to end in Kismet being defeated by the dragon. But that would de be dependent on the dragon actually attacking her. So the problem was, though, that the dragon wasn't attacking. And the reason why it wasn't attacking is because it ran out of energy. Because the enemies have the same energy stat that... Uh, uh, the, the enemies have the same energy stat that the characters do. And I simply didn't implement every enemy with the ability to recover their energy. So that kind of was fucked up. It doesn't work. So I jumped in and I fixed this battle specifically to have the fight just end after three turns. Another change I implemented real quick to make my fights a little bit less of a slog is to increase the amount of energy recovered from resting from an originally 10% to 25%. So they will recover faster now. Oh, the dragon speaks. <laughs> 